In this new video tutorial, we are going to see how to control an Indra drive or Control X drive axis using Control X Core and a Python script activated from the PLC application. Goals in this tutorial Aiding axis in the Control X Core system, Libraries used in the example, Sequence of operation which will allow us to create the instance, activate the script and other options. Communication variables between the PLC and the Python script. Python script structure. Folder for the location of the Python script used. Annexes including reset in the control X core, axis error reset in motion app, incorporate current position display, notes to keep in mind. Adding access to the system. Access will be added to the system as easily done using the Control X Works EO application. First, we need to scan the access. Then make a download, indicating yes when the software shows us to follow in a screen. Then we can close the Control Works EO and move on the next step. things will be to create an access profile. To do this, we will have to access the motion part of the Control X works. Once we are connected to the device we are going to work with. To access to create the access profile, we must put the system in service mode. This will also generate that the state is modified in the motor part to configure the mode and that will allow us to configure the axis profile. Then we activate the add axis profile button that will open a new screen in which we can choose the name of the axis profile on which axis we are going to work. Remember that Ethercat in this case axis assigns the numbers automatically and that the first and only axis we have in the example is 1001. So we'll select this a device name or address. And then the type of axis, in this case servo drive over Ethercat. Once everything is selected, activate save and move on the next step. When we leave the previous step, we will see that the axis profile has been created. But a message also appears indicating that we must configure the EO mapping that we should use it for the communication. If this is not done automatically, it must be done manually. So I recommend it verifying that the data is correctly assigned or assigned it manually. The minimum configuration will be the one that appears on the match and should be sufficient for the management of the axis that we are going to use. At the input level, current position and word status and at the level of puts, command position and the control word. This data is also saved by turning on save. The next step is to define the axis. For this we will follow the same process that we have done for axis profile. In this section we can enter the name that we will use for the axis. The type of movement. In this in the example is rotational and the format that in the example will be model. These values must be the same as that defined in the drive part so that not errors are generated during the transition to operation mode. As before we will save the modification by activating save. When you create the axis you can edit the boundary options. In general, acceleration and deceleration have very low values, so it is advisable to raise them. Otherwise, we will have the feeling that the axis is not moving correctly. It is also very important to assign the previously created profiles so that both parts are linked or else the axis will not work. This option is the same if we are going to use the axis with the axis interface. 
As in the other cases, we will validate the modifications we save. Once the profile and axis have been created, we will proceed to put the system in operating. And we must change the configuration to running state in the Motion Park, and the axis state shown appears in green. Libraries use it in the example. The first step, and from the PLC part, following the usual procedure, we must install the following libraries. CXA Python to generate the instance, activate the script, generate a script preset, and also an abort in the case of modification in the script that we must reactivate it. In addition, it is also important to instance the CXA data layer library since we are going to use it to read certain states of the device, which will not be visible if the script were not activated. Sequence of operation. All through the system is created as a sequence. Some of the steps are free. The sequence has five steps. Step 0 is the initialization that starts the sequence of steps. Step 1 will create the instance on which the script we want to use will work and that all appears in the data layer and specifically in the script screen. For the example, the instance has been named test Python. Step 2. Activated the script. We can visualize its status with the indicator in the enumeratum below. Step 3 is just awaiting a step in which the sequence shall remain alone as there is not error. Step 4 activates the script reset module in case of fire. Step 5 allows us to perform an abort in the event that is necessary to reload the script after a modification in it or simply if we want to activate it. Is. The sequence discussed above is controlled from the next module. Obviously, this is an example module and any other name can be used. Overview of the variables used. If we, for instance, creation script start script reset and abort the instance to restart it. Variables for sequence control steps and timers for the steps jump, not used in the example. Reset bits for scripts and abort errors of the instance to, for instant reboot. Timer to delay activation of the instance abort conditions. As we have mentioned before, steps are, are specifically 5, although the only ones that are sequential are from 0 to 3. In step 0, we initialize the sequence. This will happen whenever we would the PLC. Step 1 activates the instance. If it is not created, we will wait to receive the done, and if it is already created, the module will indicate an error. Although, in both cases, we will continue with the sequence. In step 2, the script is activated, and it is executed with an input of type execute. Once activated, we'll continue to run until we make an abort or error occurs in the script. In step 3, the sequence will remain active and hold on hold. In step 4, we run the script reset. In step 5, we ex execute the abort. In this case, there is a delay to activate it and we must press the button for 3 seconds. In these last two cases, the sequence is restarted in step 2 and we activate the script again. Needless to say, the usage of error handling and warning should be controlled and fine-tuned a little more to prevent the system from being frozen at some point. The next part of the sequence module is the controls for generating the instant failure reset and abort. The data market in red corresponds to the data read from the data layer which we will see below. 
Keep in mind that this data could be extracted from the script, but in the event of an uh, error of the script, we will not have this information. Therefore, we are going to use the IFB access to the data layer for the extraction of some diagnostics. In step 4 of the sequence, we can activate the reset of the script filers. As long as the script is in an error state, thus preventing us from resetting in another state, generating a problem in the application. After the reset and once the script goes to the init state, we activate the sequence step 2 again and we can start it again. The award does not depend on any previous state. However, the, to prevent it from being activated when pressed, we have placed a timer that delays the activation for about 3 seconds. So that is not pressed by mistake and we have a problem with the script. As in the previous case and begin in the init state, we return to step 2. Finally, and out of the case, we have the control module for the creation of the instance, the script start, the reset module and the abort module. By placing it here, we prevent for the freezing and not working properly. In all models, we have to put the name of the instance that we are going to use in the boot module, the script that we are going to use. As we have already mentioned, some of the data must be read from the data layer. For this, we have another program module. I shall be remembered that to access the data layer, we needed the CXA data layer library. These are the variables used, both at the level of function blocks as an string text that appear in the viewer of the web visual used in the example. Function blocks control the state of the axis, the state of the script, and the message chain by the script. Strings are used to display messages. As you can see, the message of the script created with a length of 255, so that I can show us all the text received, since otherwise some message will be cut off and therefore will not be sent correctly. In this image, we can see how we extract the value of the axis state from the path that we can obtain from the data layer and place it in the data layer access module. In the following image, we can see the control module to obtain the state of the script and the operating structure of the system. In this other image, we can see where to get the script state path from. Finally, we can see the path in the data layer from where we can get the full message that the script sends. Example of message received in case of a script failure. In the first, the variables sent to the motion module are in a string and not in real format. In the second case, the intended value does not correspond to the what the statement expects, and the error displayed by the script message is generated. In the third case, there has been a syntax error. In this case, and unlike the other two, it does indicate on which line the problem is, which in the example is 50. In general, the four space rule should be respected at any point of definition, if statements are similar. Otherwise, the system does not interpret the syntax correctly.
Communication variables between PLC and Python. These are the communication variables we are going to use in the example. Enable motor, activate motion mode in additive position, activate motion mode in absolute position, set points will, will send to the Python script, position, distance, velocity, acceleration, deceleration. In order for these variables to be visible, they must be activated in the symbol configuration part since we will have to use them in the Python script. In the data layer, these variables can be found in the following path that we can see in the image. Python script. As I've said many times, I am not an expert in Python, but as in any other programming mode, a certain order should be maintained when managing the program and thus allow it to be relatively easy to understand. The Python script is relatively simple, and we will use it to activate an axis and then move it in additive position mode and absolute position mode. The first part of the script we have the general libraries, although some of them we are not going to use, at least for the moment. The following two libraries, Motion and Data Layer, are important, which allow us to generate the axis movement and access the data layer data. There is a document called Python Runtime App, in which the instructions of these two libraries are detailed. Variable set for main operating loop. The following statement is used to set an object to the system. As we can see, the name of the axis corresponds to the one created previously in the axis section. Here we can see an overview of the continuous execution part of the script. In the first point, the reading of the variables coming from the PLC are made. As you can see, it is divided into two parts. The first assigns the values in real format and the second converts them into string format. Although we are not going to use this part. The first if we will use to disable the axis. Then we have the if for the axis activation control and set the AF state should be appears on the axis. The following if is used for the motion control in the add additive position. As can be seen, the data obtained from the data layer is included in the motion modules in real format. As we have already discussed, the values in real format can be sent directly to the motion modules. In the image, we can see the location of each of them of on the movement instruction. As mentioned above, in order to use these modules, it should have been used prior to attach object instruction. The conversion seen before from the actual form format to string allow us to see an example of writing for the script to the data layer. The data in this case must be converted from the string to JSON format and then sent using data layer lib.writeJSON. The first if manage the stop status of the axis. Data layer dot write instruction allow us to write boolean variables directly to the data layer. The status in then manage it to activate the power of the axis. And then once the axis is in enable mode and the system indicates the standstill state, we can activate the movement of the axis in boot relative position and absolute position mode. Motion control at absolute position mode. Script location folder in Python. The folders of the control X core can be accessed through the usage of Win SCP type so software. From the PC side, we can transfer the script file to the script folder used in the example.
In the modules, and specifically in the boot module, we must place the complete path to access the. To reactivate the file after a modification, we must copy it again from the PC to the folder where it is the located and then activate the tower to reload the script and use the modification made. Annexes. In this annexes, we will see how to incorporate the reset of the Control X core, the reset for the errors of the Motion app, and the extraction of the real position of the axis to visualize it in the web visu. Control module for resetting the Control X. In the image, we can see the module used, which works simultaneously with the activation of the script reset. And we can also see where it is located in the data layer. There is another error that will generate more than one problem if we don't know how to control it. This is an error generated in the Motion app and is not reset with the general reset of the Control X core or with the reset of the script. We can see that we see a message from the script are through very ambiguous and that both the script and the axis are in error. If we go to the axis part, we will be able to visualize the generated error, which as I said, is known other than trying to start the movement instruction with a value of zero. From the data layer, we can access the error indicated by the Motion app and therefore show it on the screen so that we can see more easily where the problem has occurred. In this case, what we do is create a new reading block in the module used for the data layer and read the state of the axis by displaying it in the web visual viewer. Therefore, if it is not reset and we have the error that appears in the image generated by the fact that the we have simply placed a zero as the acceleration value. How are we going to get out of this situation? The problem, however, even if we were to perform a reset in the control X and in the script, as you can see in the image, is that the axis is still in error as has not been reset even through the other two elements are. To solve these problems, we create two new variables that should also be activated in the symbol configuration. In the data layer, the variables should be then appear. In this case, we should modify the script using the two previously variables to control the reset from within the script. Don't forget the place time dot sleep instruction or the script will file. This reset does clear the error in the Motion app. In order for this new button to be activated, all we to do is place in after the done of the reset module, use it to reset the control X, so that we only need to add the, that the contact. In this way, and even if we have to press it a couple of times, the system ran without problems. As a last element to include, we are going to insert the reading of the current position. We call though this from the data layer forever and in order to have the clearest PLC program. We are going to extract this value directly from the script itself. It is important to ensure the formatting that to be able to read the stru structure correctly, because if we do not do so, we will start to generate error in the script. The modification in Python to incorporate the reading of the position will be as follow. The position must be extracted from the motion get ax act values instruction. This structure will come to us in dictionary format, so first will create an empty directionary variable. The structure will be as follows. We read the values of the axes and deposit them in the dictionary created earlier. 
If you look at the description of the statement, only the value of the position is available at the moment. Since we only want to extract the position, what we do is extract the first element from the dictionary using the pos position to extract only the value we are interested in. We convert this value to string so that it can be integrated into the next end statement. As I say, the value is concatenated in JSON format. It is then sent to PLC and displayed on the web visual. Remember that during PLC loads, the script made the stop. Special attention when they executing the example, since if the axis is in error, it is obviously not start. Keep a close eye on the syntax of the script so as not to generate errors that are difficult to debug. It's the best to use the rule of four, four spaces from the starting point of the instructions. Certain errors in the script display the error line, making it easy to access the error point. With drive error, you can diagnose the reason for the error in the script if this was caused by an error of motion instructions, such as a acceleration value to zero or the speed value to zero. The simple program is keep active with a while, but is recommended separating it into parts using the 3D system that will allow us to the better structure to the program. This is opinion of the of an whole programmer. We will see this option soon is some other manuals are through. You can find reference to it in the manual dedicated Python within the drive. In this application example, even if there is an emergency stop or any circumstance of error in the drive, the script is still running and therefore the system can be reset after the relevant resets have been, been handled.